Hey, welcome back everybody. Jeff Frick here with theCUBE. We're in downtown San Francisco at Zor Subscribe 2017. About 1,500 people, according to David G, talking about the subscription economy. And a big part of that, when you collect money, you got to collect the taxes. And we're excited to have Simon Geach with us. He's a VP of Sales, Billing, and Commerce Platforms from Avalara. Did I Hello. get that right? Yep. How do you pronounce it? Geach. Geach, no, Avalara. Did I get Avalara. That? Avalara, all right, so welcome. Yeah. <laughs> Thank so you. Collecting taxes. Everybody's yeah. got to do it. Everybody's got to pay them. Not fun, though. It's not fun and not <laughs> simple, right? As no. you say, with sales tax, especially, you've That's got right. the state, you've got the county, you've got special assessments, you've got this, you've got that. That's right. So that's what you guys do. That's right. So if you think about this subscription economy, one of the most important things in that is making sure what's on the invoice is accurate for the customer. Because of course, the subscription economy is built around that engagement through an invoice. And that can be the most important document that a customer gets as you're building that long-term relationship. So ensuring what's on that document is accurate, including the taxes, is really important. And for some companies, it can be actually fairly simple. But for a lot of companies, particularly as they're growing and expanding their business requirements, it becomes ever more complex, and the costs of dealing with it manually can really sneak up on you and right. can start to increase. And before you know it, you're investing a lot of time and resource in trying to manage it with really no guarantee of accuracy. And then, of course, there's the longer-term risk that comes if you get something wrong, you miss a rate, you, there's a change in product taxability that you don't capture. You can get hit and penalized really heavily in an audit. Right, and then in the subscription economy, there's a lot more transactions, right? right. So the opportunity to mess it up uh, goes up dramatically. Exactly. You know, tax legislation changes really frequently. So if you're billing customers on an ongoing, constant basis, the need to be up to date with the latest changes is really important because if you're not and you miss it, it can cost you a lot of money. So where's the there there? So if I if I am buying something on a subscription, which tax do I pay? Do I pay? where my residence is? Do I pay where my phone happened to be when I said go? Do I pay where my phone happened to be when the end of the month hit? I mean, what is the, what are some of the jurisdictional rules? Right, so if you think about, um, Colorado is a really good example of this. Think about Colorado as a state. It not only, not only has state level assessments, it has then county and city level assessments as well. So it very much depends on where you live. We could be neighbors and you could pay 4% less tax than me, literally being next door to each other because tax jurisdictions don't correlate with zip codes at all, and people make the assumption that they do. So it's very easy for that tax rate to change, even across the street. So then you have to factor in origin rules and destination rules. So some states right, right. have origin rules, and some states have destination rules, and some states, like California, have a combination of both. So you really have to have a way of capturing all of that and managing all of that, and as, as I said, as it gets bigger and revenue for states is, is more of an issue because they're looking to generate more and more revenue right, right. to deal with budget deficits, sales tax is a really easy way for them to do that. So the states are paying more and more attention to how, how accurate you are in doing that. And you got to have it right at the invoice. You can't go back and fix it after the right. fact, right? Well, you could, but then, then it's, it's coming it's, out of your it's coming out of your pocket, right? And if you get it wrong and you get assessed for the difference, it's coming out of your pocket potentially, or you're overcharging the customer, which the state doesn't care about. They just right. want what you've charged the customer. So being accurate with it not only optimizes the efficiency within your business, it also means your resources can actually be used for other activities because sales tax compliance is just a cost of doing business. It's not going to help your business grow, it's not going to make your business more profitable. So, so, if it, so is it by the, what's the, the smallest granularity that you look at then when you're trying to figure out which of the many rules impacts the decision that I'm making? Is it zip code? You're saying it's even smaller than zip code? Yeah, so we actually determine the tax rate using a latitude and longitude coordinate overlaid by a tax jurisdictional boundary of the US. And that's proprietary technology that we maintain. Okay. Then we overlay that with product taxability content. So for example, in Kansas, if you buy a Kit Kat or you buy a Snickers, the Kit Kat has a lower or zero tax rate because it has flour in it, the Snickers doesn't. So. <laughs> If I'm in New York and I More sell... More benefits to yeah. gluten-free, less tax. <laughs> if I sell you a bagel in New York and I don't cut it, it's tax-free. If I slice it, it's taxable because I've rendered a you a service. grocery item and now it's right. a, like a restaurant item. So there are the different tax rates apply just right. based on what you do with the product. Right, right. So, and how do you capture that in your rules? Well, so we have a content team of over 100 people who are managing state compliance legislation and are working to ensure that our tax engine is always up to date. And we actually guarantee the accuracy of our calculations. It's easier just to put a 20% flat rate and then you figure <laughs> it out on the back end. <laughs> I mean, it's gotta be amazingly com complex. So you got people by jurisdiction, you got it by state, you've mm -hmm. got it by 
content type. You've got it's also special taxing jurisdictions. So if they build a new stadium or a new transit system, the tax may apply for a period and then go away again. So really having someone who universally can supply you with an engine that's going to take care of all that right. and update all of that, it not only helps your profitability, it also helps your customer experience. Because then you don't have customers ringing you going, well, why have you charged me this? Right, right. Uh, we automate everything about the returns and remittance process and the exemption process on the back end as well. So it isn't just the way you calculate, it's the full end-to-end -end process of remitting and filing those taxes, responding to tax notices, and then managing exemptions. Right. So universally, we can help people outsource the, this burden. So you guys you guys do that for, for transactions regardless of whether it's subscription or not subscription, correct? Right, correct. So from your point of view, what's different now with the growth of the subscription economy? How does that impact your business, or does it, or does it just make more transactions, more complexity? Well, I think I think to your point earlier about the fact that because rules change and they're not uniform necessarily in the way they change, sure, if the state decides to change a rule, they'll publish a date when they're going to change the rule by, and they're not always uniform. There's not always just one time a year when those rules change. Right. And of course, if you're a national company or a growing company, trying to stay abreast of that across the 45 states that charge sales tax can be really challenging and time consuming and costly, long term or short term. So what we're doing, whether it's a subscription customer or not, is making that really easy for them to scale. So you think about a subscription customer, they want to scale, they want to scale fast. The last thing they want to have to do is worry about how they're going to implement their tax policy. We take that away so they can concentrate on growing their subscription base. Simon, I think you got great job security. <laughs> Death and taxes, right? <laughs> All right. Well, thanks for taking a few minutes Thank out you. of your busy day. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. All righty, Simon, I'm Jeff. You're watching theCUBE from Zora Subscribe. Thanks for watching.